Welcome to our worship service for the fourth Sunday of Advent 2020 from Pinnacle Lutheran Church in Rochester, New York. Just a reminder that you can find all of our worship services plus a daily devotional at our website, pinnaclelutheran.org. Our opening hymn today is Prepare the Royal Highway. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen that our eyes and ears may be open to receive the mystery of God's love. Let us first empty ourselves of everything that has closed our hearts to God, confessing our sin and our need of forgiveness in life. At, At the, the Lord's, Lord's own invitation and command, and command I, I confess, confess all my sins to God, God the, the very thoughts, words, and deeds with which I have offended him and hurt my neighbor. neighbor. I come now in the sincere hope and faith of the forgiveness of God, made known to the whole world in the mystery of His Son, Jesus Christ, who has sacrificed His own flesh and blood for me. Remove my sin and guilt for His sake, and restore a right spirit within me. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The, the light, light no, no darkness, darkness can, can overcome. overcome. Let your light scatter the darkness and, and illumine, illumine your church. Our service continues with our psalm. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. For you have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, is now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, and help us by your might that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with our Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 7, beginning with the first verse. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, 
and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure before, forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We speak the gradual. Rejoice Thanks greatly, be, O, o daughter of Zion. Zion. Shout, Shout aloud, aloud, O daughter, daughter of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Behold, Behold, your king, king is coming, coming to you, righteous and, and having salvation. salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Our epistle is from Romans chapter 16, beginning with the 25th verse. Now to him who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore, through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. And we speak the Alleluia verse. Alleluia. Behold, the virgins shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Alleluia. In the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And our hymn of the day today is, Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this past summer, I don't know if anybody will remember, but we had a reading from Zechariah that came early in July. And Zechariah said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And that reading from Zechariah actually comes either during Advent, the first week of Advent, as we remember our Lord coming into Jerusalem in a triumphal entry, or of course it appropriately fits in Holy Week, uh, as our Lord came in on Palm Sunday. And as I mentioned at the time, Zechariah's words were good news, and they were written for a people who had just come out of the Babylonian captivity, who had suffered for 70 years in exile in a foreign land, and they were weary, and they needed hope. They needed some good news, not only because they had been in exile for so long, but because the world they had come back to, the Jerusalem, the Israel that they had come back to, was nothing like it used to be. You know, the rebuilt temple was a shadow of its former self. The king was gone. The glory was gone. The hope was gone, and the people needed a word of hope. And Zechariah's words were words of good news for a weary people. But just as the Israelites 
needed to be picked up after their long and difficult exile, so it seems we needed to be picked up in those, in, in those summer months as we were still dealing with COVID and we were weary from all of the changes that had happened in our lives. And this past July, Christmas joy seemed a long way off when we couldn't even think about what Christmas was going to be in a couple of months. But we rejoiced in Zechariah's message because Christmas was coming. Hope was coming. Well, now here we are. We're just on the verge of Christmas and not a lot has actually changed. Uh, We haven't gone back to normal, whatever normal happened to be. If anything, our society and our country have gotten a little bit stranger in intervening months. The summer of discontent has been followed by a fall and winter surge in the virus. We've had a tumultuous election cycle. And now, but now with the release of two vaccines, we have a glimmer of hope on our horizon, just as the Israelites heard that glimmer of hope from Zechariah. So we have a glimmer of hope on our horizon. And in our reading for this last Sunday in Advent, That's what we hear too, that hope. Hope is coming, true hope. Christmas is almost here. And today we read of the annunciation of the birth of Jesus to the Virgin Mary. And the angel comes and he says to her, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Or, as we know from the Catholic tradition, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Um... And there's, that's something we don't hear every day. Would that we would all have such a greeting from the Lord where we could be told that we have found favor with God. And so you would expect, after such a greeting from Gabriel, that he was going to actually give Mary some good news. And so what he says to her, though, is, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And this was good news. Remember, Mary was unmarried, probably a young teenager, and she lived in a society that put young unmarried teenagers who were pregnant to death. That was part of the old Mosaic law. Part of the Levitical law was that adultery and other sins like that were punishable by stoning. And so this is good news, but this was the announcement of the long-awaited Messiah, and Mary knew that, um, the one who was going to save God's people the one who had been promised all the way back in the Garden of Eden when our first parents fell into sin, the seed of the woman who would crush Satan's head. And now that promise was being delivered to Mary. Mary was being told, you are going to be the woman. It is going to be the seed of your womb who is going to crush the head of Satan. And that's the good news that we're going to hear the angels sing about in the skies over Bethlehem in a couple of days. It's in, and the good news that they proclaim is in the name. It's all in the name Jesus. Jesus in Hebrew is Yeshua. We don't tend to say Yeshua. We, don't, we always call him Jesus in English. But the Hebrew name is Yeshua. And Yeshua means Yahweh saves. God himself has come to save his people. Christmas is almost here and the true gift that that it brings is the knowledge that Yahweh saves. And Mary at her young age knew that. Mary knew what that meant. Mary knew that promise. Even though she was going to face public scorn and derision and ridicule and maybe even danger for being pregnant and unwed, she knew the promise was for her. Listen to her response. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. That is the response of faith, that come what may, even if it is bad, and it may well be bad, let it be done to me according to your word. Because the promise of her son's name was God's promise for her too, not just for the world. Yeshua, Yahweh saves. And God had already provided for this young woman remarkably in the man to whom she was engaged. Joseph. You see, the the scandal of Mary's pregnancy wasn't just a scandal for Mary as an unwed young mother, but it was a scandal for Joseph because one of two things had to be. Either Joseph was the father, at least in public opinion, Joseph was the father, which would have been a scandal because they would have come together before marriage, which was against the law, 
Or, worse yet, what if, as it turns out, this, that she was pregnant by somebody else? What a scandal for Joseph and for his reputation. And so the Gospel of Matthew records that this remarkably godly and caring man, being a just man, as Matthew writes, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Now think about that for a moment. In a society that it is a capital offense to be pregnant and, un and unwed, the husband, the, the fiancé to whom this woman is engaged, finds out that she is pregnant by somebody other than him. And he doesn't want to put her to shame. He's not thinking of himself, he's thinking of her, and he doesn't want to put her to shame. And so he thinks of a way to just end the, the engagement quietly. But Matthew tells us that as he was pondering these things, um, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will, she will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Note again the name. Both Mary and Joseph were told the name. His name is going to be Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh saves. That meant that God would save Joseph, even though there were going to be hard days and difficult days and perhaps embarrassing days for his new young family, God was going to save him. The promise was for him, the promise was for Mary, just as the promise was for the whole world. And today, as we sit on the verge of Christmas ourselves, we find ourselves in the waning days of 2020 facing some tough days ahead. It's been a bad year. There is no way to sugarcoat the year that we have been through. Yes, we have seen amazing things. We have seen amazing developments in vaccine development, alternative methods of learning and doing business. Um, we've seen humanity's ingenuity on full display as it's met and overcome challenge after challenge after challenge that we have faced in 2020. But we are still left with the ongoing challenges of the pandemic and all the social discord in the wake of demonstrations and the election. But no matter what, no matter what, my brothers and sisters, Christmas is almost here. And the good news that was given to an unmarried pregnant teenager whose life was in peril in her society is the same good news that was given to her fiancé as he considered separating from her quietly for her sake is the same good news, is the same good news that sustains us today as we live in these precarious times. The promise is given in the name of the Son of Mary. Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh saves. And that guarantee hasn't changed throughout the history of the entire world. When our first parents sinned, they consigned us to a broken world where we age, we get sick, and eventually we die. We were broken and we were unable to fix ourselves. We were condemned and we were unable to save ourselves. And so God did the only thing that a loving God could do. He became our champion in Jesus, in Yeshua, reminding us that Yahweh saves. His incarnation, his birth, was the beginning of our salvation. Yahweh had finally come to save his people. Paul tells us this in Colossians. For in him, that is in Jesus, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth, or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. The salvation he gives to us cost him his life. It is the great exchange, his death for our life. One early church father put it this way, the cross of Christ is the key of paradise. And that good news, that the cross of Christ is the key of paradise, has sustained the church throughout all of history, through all the ravages that have been thrown our way, whether it was plagues or wars or famines, what persecution, whatever we face in this broken world, the promise still stands. Yahweh saves. Our Lord told his disciples the night before he was crucified in the 16th chapter of John, I have said these things to you 
that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. And our Lord has overcome the brokenness of our world through his broken body on the cross. So that Paul could write at the end of Romans chapter 8, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all of these things, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so my brothers and sisters, as we approach Christmas and we rejoice in the birth of our Savior, lift up your heads and rejoice because Christmas is almost here. And the real gift is the promise of the name Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh saves. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit keep your hearts and minds in faith to life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed. We confess our faith as they are printed before you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, as we draw closer to the grand celebration of the incarnation and birth of your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for making known the mystery of your love from the very first promise to Adam and Eve through the continued witnesses of the holy prophets, the apostles and the evangelists, and finally through your living voice through the ministers of your church down to this day. Grant that your living word ever call us and all sinners to repentance and faith in your only begotten Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. Keep all that you have called to preach and teach and care for your people in true faith. Guard them against the attacks of the evil one and give them health and joy in their ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, send your spirit over the whole world that those who lead in the authority of government acknowledge your laws and will, making for times of peace, that we may live faithfully in safety. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, by your holy word and sacrament, strengthen us to obedient living. Send your grace, mercy, and peace and love to surround our families. Inspire those of various vocations in the world. Comfort and defend and heal all those in times of illness or distress, especially those we list on our prayer list and those we bring before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. By the mystery of our Lord's incarnation, his life of obedient faith, and his substitutionary death on the cross, we pray that you would establish in the one true faith, you would establish us in the one true faith, and strengthen us in lives that are obedient to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. O God most high, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death, he has opened the kingdom of heaven and closed the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness 
and in the shadow of death. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him, and we may remain watchful for his advent in glory on the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the, and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Strengthen your gift of faith in us and keep us by your power to be your own. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is from heaven above to earth I come. <laughs>